students as children see them, an annual exhibition of art and essays by New York City school children, is a result of a collaboration between the National Museum of the American Indian and the New York City Public Schools under the auspices of the Native American Heritage Committee. Each year, the exhibition's guidelines are sent to schools in New York City by the Department of Cultural Arts of the New York City Public Schools. Students are invited to create two-dimensional works of art and to write an essay on a Native American theme. The art and essays are judged on the basis of artistic merit as well as historical and cultural accuracy. Approximately 50 artworks are chosen to go on view. The paintings are matted, the children's essays are typeset for use as labels, and the exhibit is installed in the museum's special exhibits gallery. Several families lived in an Iroquois longhouse. These pictures show the living area of one family. These people shared a fire with another family across a center aisle. The, cent the entire family worked to provide the necessaries of life. The mother prepares a meal while the father carves a wooden bowl. Two babies rest hanging in a cradle. Along the walls are sleeping and sitting spaces for the families. Pottery jars, woven baskets, and furs are stored or hung along the walls. Many ancient baskets have been found in excellent shape because of the hot, dry weather in the southwest. The style of baskets then is exactly the same today. This is because the craft has been handed down from mother to daughter through the generations. I learned the Hopi women were not only very skilled, but the designs and colors they used are very beautiful. One Creek Indian chief was named Speckled Snake. He, he said that the white man always made promises to the Indians. Another Creek Indian chief was Chief McIntosh. He signed an agreement with the white man to move the tribe to a land where the white man said they would never go. Chief McIntosh's tribe was so tired of hearing the white man's promises that when he signed this agreement, his tribe killed him. Well, I took a lot of it from books and then I wrote the essay um, with a little help and I took parts of it that I thought was important from the books and I put it into an essay. Well, I went over to the library and I looked up most of, in most of the books and I found out the information from there. Then I found a picture of it and I drew it. And I learned that this, that the pottery was just made from earth colors. Well, um, we did a report for social studies, a um, five-page report. And um, when, when my art teacher, Ms. Gortzman, in, um told us about a project, I decided to use that topic. All that came to me was to um, draw um, an Indian dancing. Where did you find the image? My teacher taught me. Well, my teacher, she put n names of the tribes on the board, and I think, because I didn't know about Creek, so I wanted to learn more about Creek, about the Creek. Since its inception in 1987, the children's art exhibit has produced several results. It gives Native American children pride to see their heritage depicted in artworks that are free of the usual stereotypes. For the student artists, seeing their work treated with the same respect as the finest art in a major museum bolsters self-esteem and creates an incentive to learn. Dr. Edwin Pell from the Bronx Outreach. Can you tell us about your school? Our school is for 17 to 21 year old high school dropouts in the South Bronx. These students, uh, in most cases, have never had an art course. <laughs> never had an art course? They don't know how to paint, they don't know how to draw, and this is their first uh, try. Some of the students whose work here is exhibited here are now taking the drawing lessons at the Metropolitan Museum on Saturdays, and uh, some are going to Cooper Union at the Saturday drawing class. So it sounds like the doing this artwork has helped yeah. their self-esteem. Oh, yes, it did. It did. It has helped their self-esteem, and, and um, they never were given, um, I think, materials uh, of this size. You know, large pieces of paper and professional quality paints, and, and the result is a little nicer when you use good materials. And so it came out beautifully. The exhibition rewards creative teachers and students 
and provides a model for integrating research and art. My name is Tamar Lax. And what school do you teach? I teach at PS 139 Annex in Brooklyn. And what are the um, grades that you teach? I teach third, fourth, and fifth grade. How many students um, work was accepted in this exhibit? Uh, four students had their work ex uh, accepted into this exhibition and the work that was sent back to us from the museum that was not accepted was set up as a show in the school. So we have Native American arts in the school. Each class had an assignment. I divided the United States up into basic language groups mm -hmm. and then each group um, studied an area of the United States and uh, the various tribes within that given area. We have 570 students, maybe 590 students that I see every week. And um, that's 21 classes. So there were 21 different tribes that were studied or tribal groups that were studied. They did their research. They made it part of their social studies. I worked with the classroom teachers. And then they came back and did the work based on their research. And they worked for about a month and a half between the beginning, the research, the preliminary sketches, and then the final execution of the work. And that's, so everybody in my school knows something that they didn't know before September. This is Renee Darvin from the Department of Cultural Art for the New York City Board of Education. Hello, Renee. Hello. <laughs> I'm so proud of what, what's happened here, really. You know, I remember when this began and, um, and how, how at first we had artwork and, and the stories the kids told were cliches and uh, some of them even nasty um, and uh, nobody seemed to even realize that that was so. Uh, I remember the first time we, we had, um, the first entry I opened that year, there was a blue-eyed George Washington because people weren't even quite sure what we meant by Native American heritage. That's right. I remember. Uh, we've remember come a long that? way. And yes. now we've got a show that's so beautiful and it's truly a fusion um, of the art and the understanding and the sensitivity and some of the things the kid wrote the kids have written um, are, uh, betray a, an unusual sensitivity I think a really as if they they truly feel um, what it is that they've uh, they've depicted <laughs> I'm going to apologize in advance for mispronouncing some of the names on this list, uh, but I do want to uh, congratulate all of the uh, participants in this event and point out how significant that being selected in a jury show is. I know uh, for some of uh, you students, this is probably the first time that you've been uh, in an art show in which you've had to compete with other uh, artists. I think there were uh, 400 entries and 50, uh, 51 were selected. So this is a very prestigious uh, honor. First is Juan uh, Acerado, Andrew Bell, Fernando Dutalan, Robert Chung, Maria Diaz, Brandon Ellison, uh, Kristen Fiorello, Jane Harrell, Tierra Huertas, Andrea Kiefer, Anna Kisoyuk, Minnie Ko, Ki Feng Lau, Bong Chia Lee, Alyssa Levin, Cliff Levine, Regina Lomano, Yalina Magazinic, Frank Mock, Elizabeth Morales, Marilyn Rios, Christine Ritchie, Carmen Rodriguez, Samuel Roman, Matthew Rotante, uh, Tian Su Tan, Diana Young. There you go. Robert. There you go. 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 Thank you. There you go. All right, Jessica. We're going to end the
presentation with uh, a round dance, which is a Native American dance, which um, people usually um, perform, get together and perform at powwows. It's a social dance, and it's also sometimes called a friendship dance. How does it make you feel to see your painting in this museum? I can't explain how it feels. It feels just too great. I don't know. It's so exciting. When I found out it was in the museum, I was like, oh, wow. How do you feel having your artwork in this exhibit? Happy. I thought it was just going to be hanging up on the wall without a frame around it. I never thought that it was going to be in a frame. I feel, I feel so great that it's in a museum. And and I just I just I just I just can't believe that it got that I that I that it got in, put in the museum. 